In the last video, we went over how to solve linear inequalities. And in this video, we're going to go over a few more examples to make sure that you understand that concept. And let's start off with an example. Let's say we have 2x plus 3 is less than negative 1. So just like we have solved the previous examples, we're going to try and keep our variables to one side and our constants to the other side. So let's keep our 2x on this side here. So we're going to keep our 2x here. And now we want to move this plus 3 to this side of the inequality. So that's going to become a minus 3 on the other side. So we're going to keep our minus 1 here. And now we have minus 3. And we can simplify that to 2x is less than minus 1 minus 3 is minus 4. And now to solve for x, we're going to divide both sides by 2. So that is going to leave us with x is less than negative 4 over 2, which is the same thing as negative 2. So x is less than negative 2. And if we were to draw this on a number line, let's write down our number line here. And let's say we have negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And what this inequality says is that our value of x is going to be less than negative 2, but not equal to negative 2. If it was less than or equal to negative 2, the sign would look like this, but it doesn't. So we can put a little bubble on our negative 2, but we're not going to color that in. And our value of x is going to be all values less than negative 2. So it's going to be everything to the left of negative 2 on the number line. So that is how we're going to represent that. And if we wanted to write that down in interval notation, the interval notation for this is going to be, well, our values for x are going to go all the way up until negative infinity. So that's going to be our left boundary. And our right boundary is negative 2. And because it's not equal to negative 2, we're going to have a regular bracket. If this was that x is less than or equal to negative 2, we would have a closed bracket here. But negative 2 is not included in our possible values for x. So we have our regular parentheses here. Let's go over another example. Let's say we had 2x minus 3 times x plus 1 is greater than or equal to negative 2 plus 4 times x minus 2. Now when you first look at this, this looks quite complicated, but we're actually going to solve this in exactly the same way that we've been solving all of our questions um, that have come before this. So let's start out by just expanding these terms with brackets here. So our 2x stays the same, and we're going to expand this minus 3 out. So we have minus 3x minus 3, because minus 3 times 1 is minus 3. We have our greater than or equal to sign here. We have minus 2 plus 4 times x is 4x, and 4 times minus 2 is negative 8. And now we have terms that we can simplify on both sides. So 2x minus 3x is going to be minus x minus 3 is greater than or equal to. We have minus 2 minus 8. So that is going to become minus 10 plus 4x. And now let's try and keep all of our constants on one side and our variables on the other. So let's keep this minus x here. And let's bring this plus 4x to this side. So that's going to become minus 4x. And then we have our greater than or equal to sign. We're going to take this minus 3 and we're going to bring it to the other side. And we already have this minus 10 on this side. So let's just write that one down. And now we're bringing this minus 3 to this side. So that's going to become plus 3. And now we can simplify both of these. So we have minus x minus 4x is minus 5x. And that's greater than or equal to negative 10 plus 3 is equal to minus 7. And now to solve for x, we are going to divide both sides by minus 5. But remember, because we're dividing by a negative number, we have to flip this inequality. So we're going to have x is less than or equal to, remember that's because we were dividing by a negative number, so we're flipping this inequality, 
And if we divide negative 7 by negative 5, we're going to get 7 over 5. So x is less than or equal to 7 over 5. Let's first figure out what 7 over 5 would be as a decimal. 7 over 5 is the same thing as 1.4. So if we were to draw that on a number line, let's just do a simple number line here. Let's say we have negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So our x is less than or equal to 7 over 5, which is 1.4. So 1.4 is going to fall right about here. So that's 7 over 5. So our x is going to be less than or equal to 7 over 5. So we can put a little bubble in 7 over 5. We can color that in because it is less than or equal to. And we're going to have all of these values to the left of 7 over 5. And if we were to write that in interval notation, then we know that our left-hand boundary for our values of x is going to be negative infinity, because this is going to go, keep going on and on and on into the negative numbers until infinity. And our right side boundary is going to be 7 over 5. And remember, because this is less than or equal to, our 7 over 5 here has a closed bracket. And that is because our 7 over 5 value is included in the possible values for x. Uh, let's go over another example. Let's say we had negative 3x plus 1 is greater than 2x plus 15. So let's try and get our variables on this side and our constants on this side. So we're going to keep our negative 3x here. Let's move our 2x to this side. So it's going to become minus 2x. We have our greater than sign here. We're going to keep our 15 here. And now we're moving this plus 1 to this side. So it becomes minus 1. And that means minus 3x minus 2x is minus 5x, and that is greater than 15 minus 1 is 14. And now to isolate for x, we have to divide both sides by negative 5. And remember, because we're dividing by a negative number, we have to flip our inequality. So we're going to divide both sides by negative 5. And that means that x is going to be less than negative 14 over 5. So if we were to write that in interval notation, then we know that all of our values for x are going to be less than negative 14 over 5. So negative 14 over 5 is our upper boundary for the values of x. So our upper boundary is negative 14 over 5. It's not less than or equal to, so we have our regular bracket because negative 14 over 5 is not included as one of the possible values of x. And we have all of our values that are less than negative 14 over 5, so our lower boundary will be negative infinity. Let's go over one last example. Let's say you had an inequality that looked like this. So this is a little different than the examples that we have been doing thus far. And that's because we have two of these inequality signs. And although this looks different than what we've been doing, the way that we're going to solve it is very similar. And this is an example of a compound inequality. And we're going to go over these types of inequalities in more detail in the next video. But I wanted to give a quick example of something like this, just so we can get a taste of what we're going to be dealing with next. And the way that we can solve this inequality, well, there's actually two methods that you can use, but I'm only going to go over one of those methods today, and we can look at the other one in the next video. So when we have an inequality like this, we want to try and get all of our variable terms in the middle and keep all of our constants on the outsides. And we have to remember that whatever we do to the middle, we have to do to both sides. And what I mean by that is, let's say now we want to isolate for our x term in the middle. So we want to get rid of this minus 4 here. And the way that we can get rid of this minus 4 is by adding 4 but we have to add 4 to every single part of this inequality. So we have to add a 4 here, add a 4 here, and add a 4 here. We have a minus 8, and we're going to be adding 4. Then we have 2x minus 4, and we're going to be adding 4. And then we have 3, 
and we're going to be adding 4 as well. So here, minus 8 plus 4 is going to give us minus 4. Then we have our inequality sign. We have 2x minus 4 plus 4. So these two will cancel each other out, and we're going to be left with 2x. We have our second sign, and we have 3 plus 4, which is 7. And now what we want to do is we want to isolate for x. So we want to divide this middle part by 2 in order to isolate x. But we have to remember that whatever we do to the middle part, we have to do to each of these parts of the inequality. So we are going to have to divide each and every one of these by 2. So negative 4 divided by 2 is going to be negative 2. Then we have our x, and we have 7 over 2. And so what this inequality tells us is that our value of x is going to fall between negative 2 and 7 over 2. Our value for x is greater than negative 2, but less than 7 over 2. And so if we wanted to write that in interval notation, we know that our lower boundary for x is negative 2, and our upper boundary for x is 7 over 2 and it is not including any of these values because it's not greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. So negative 2 and 7 over 2 are not included in our possible values for x. They are just going to represent the upper and lower boundaries for x. And if we wanted to write this down on a number line, let's represent our number line here. And we know that 7 over 2 is the same thing as 3.5. So 3.5 is right here, so this is 7 over 2. And we know that our values of x are going to lie between negative 2 and 7 over 2. So we can circle our negative 2 and we can circle our 7 over 2. And x is going to lie in between those two values. 